<laughs> Hi, everybody. Clovis and I are so excited to tell you some good news. You ready to tell them some good news, Clovis? Hmm? You can tell everybody some good news? Well, we got our first buy me a coffee person. They bought me a coffee. That was wonderful. Yes, it was. It really helped out when my alternator went out. Yes, it did. So we're going to dance. <laughs> yeah, we're going to dance. You think we should dance for everybody? Oh, it's kind of everybody. It's kind of too dark for everybody to see you. <laughs> yeah, but we're going to dance. So we're going to do happy dance when we get um, somebody buy me a coffee. So I never really mentioned to anybody that it is down below. If you push underneath this video where it says dancing with bears then there's <laughs> you watching Clovis you got your eyeballs then there's um I don't know I'll have to look again somewhere in there there's a buy me a coffee and I never really mentioned it but somebody bought us some it was so exciting so we're gonna dance and our dance will get better and better whenever somebody gets us a coffee <laughs> okay and then we'll get on with the video Woohoo! <laughs> you can dance with me, Clovis? Yay! Yay! Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, are you excited, huh? Are we excited? Here. Where'd the coyotes go, Clovis? Every time Mommy gets the camera, they be quiet. Crazy hair lady. <laughs> well, I thought I'd get a lot done today, but it's a lot windier and colder than I anticipated. So I did get to talk to my son though for an hour, so that was fun. And um, so now I told, like I told him, I'm gonna go out and pick up sticks. Uh, most of the forest was covered with snow, but the heavier pine trees, you know, didn't allow the snow to hit the ground. So there was some there, and I cut a few limbs off the lower limbs off of some trees. So I got I got some oops, I got some sticks. <laughs> and there's some of the lower limbs that I cut. And then I got all these sticks to break up, I'll break them up into little pieces, put them in my my bag for kindling. Okay, so we're gonna break up the twigs. And this is really a job for my glasses. And if they don't break, which these aren't doing too good, if they don't really snap real quick, then I'm not really interested in them because they're not dried out enough. But if they break into bunches of pieces, These little guys off. Tear off that little one. We fill the bag. It filled up. Truck emptied and a can, a garbage can, full of twig kindling. I try to keep these full. 
So there's one, two, three, four of these cans. And that's a good job. Oh, and I got enough wood inside for the night. All different sizes. So it's a pretty good gathering today. And these are the skids I picked up. Hope this has this ball. Lighting's not right. But anyway, I'm gonna work on these steps with those pallets that I picked up in town. That last step is a little bit too tall. I mean, it's still not gonna be perfect. But what I'm gonna do is put another, another set this size on top of this one, which will make it a high step. And then that's a high step. And then we'll put shorter steps down here. So I'm gonna cover those. Can't get the stain yet, but I'll get them covered for my path in the bathtub garden. There's the bathtub. <laughs> Hi, Kobe. Anyway, for the path, I'm going to put evergreen needles or whatever. So, uh, these are more of a spruce needle. I might rake up some pine needles in the forest and put them down first. They're kind of more golden or tan. They're kind of washed out. And then I'll put these on top. Of course, these will turn too when they dry. In Ohio, you can put your Christmas tree out after Christmas and it'd still be green halfway to, through the summer. But I don't think that's going to happen but he'll make a nice little pathway of some sort. Ah, oh, my friend. <laughs> it wasn't really the hardest, heaviest day I've ever worked, but four hours in the cold. Yeah, my body's aching pretty bad. So I'll take a couple of those. And then I had made some dried beans and I made a turkey on the wood burner a couple nights ago. I think I've got a picture of that for you. But anyway, I cooked a turkey and so I had dried beans and I mixed them up. They might not look too good, but I've been eating them for two days and they are really good. <laughs> so after eating them for two days, I'm glad I don't live with anybody. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to have tonight. <laughs> and then I'll just cuddle in and sleep well. Hi guys. Well, a couple nights ago, I put my hair up in rollers and slept in these big rollers so I could be all beautiful the next time you saw me. <laughs> and then I went out and shoveled snow yesterday. And so now it's back to crazy again. <laughs> a little bit of something going on there in my bangs, but oh well. We'll try again later. Um, in the meantime, there's it's been snowing for two days, and it's supposed to snow probably another couple days. <clears throat> so that's going to cut down on my the chores I had to do. But it is nice to snuggle in by the fire and read a book. So I am going to read some excerpts from a book I'm reading about walking the Appalachian Trail. Um, it's something really cool. I like to read those. And I like to read the stories about um, people crossing the ocean to in sailboats. So I have to try. I don't have any of those. I have to try to find some of those so I can read them. And I wanted to read some. I wrote poems a few years back. And I kind of thought some of them were pretty good. And I was looking for them so I could read some of those to you. <clears throat> and um, they must have been in that box of every, the, my memoirs that got ruined. So uh, I looked pretty hard. I don't think they're going to show up. Anyway, maybe that will inspire me to write more. So today I'm going to finish off with reading the book. And I'll be back with you soon. I'm reading with my headlight on. Um, it's still light outside, but my windows are covered to keep the warmth in, so it's a little dark 
to read. So I've got my headlight. And I have read this book, but I'm going to read a few of the paragraphs for you. The Appalachian Trail is the world's longest continuously marked footpath, stretching 2,160 miles between Georgia and Maine. Every year, a couple thousand would-be through hikers set out to walk its entire length. About one of every ten actually makes it. When people walk the Appalachian Trail, they take on um, an alias name because they have to check in at different points all along the trail. And Robert took the name of um, Ryman Worm. So on day one, White Blaze Day 1, Tuesday, April 1st, 1997, on Springer Mountain Terminus, Georgia, Blue Ridge Mountains, he started his hike. And it started off at a lodge. And then two miles from the lodge, though, I heaved myself down, gasping on a stump next to the path, swimming in sweat, underneath a fleece vest and glossy blue Gore-Tex jacket. My backpack already drags at my shoulders. It features a sophisticated suspension system meant to direct the weight of the padded hip belt. Good in theory, but in order to work, it requires hips to rest on, and mine are buried under rolls of fat. No matter how corset tight I clench the straps and how I readjust the chin, the belt keeps slipping over my hips and down my butt, bringing all 60 plus pounds to bear on my back and shoulders. Who is this intrepid Ryman worm of ours? A big man, about six feet three and weighing in around 275 pounds. The last 75 of which I have accredited, accredited during the recent downhill slide towards middle age. At age 38, he, his is the bulk of an athlete gone to seed. Trunk light thighs, a massive butt, heavy roll around the waist, a double chin, a superstructure of broad shoulders, and big bones undergirding a drapery of blubber, the effect orca-like. His hair has been buzzed short along the sides with a little left on top, and it is normally thick and unruly, dark brown with a few touches of white, but no signs of baldness. His whiskers are coming in salt and pepper gray, and he has not shaved for a couple of days already, as he plans to grow a beard for the trial. Now, after an hour of this First day in the woods, his face is all blotchy from the initial climb, pulse pounding in his ears, and he wonders if he will collapse. A couple of years earlier, the doctor said he should get more exercise and lose some weight. Well, okay, Doc, this ought to do. And this is a picture of him starting the trip. And this is a picture six over six months later at the end of the trip. He lost 75 pounds and grew a beard. I did enjoy the book. And like the critics say, walk with this man, start to finish, the whole trail, its beauties and hardships, and its value to the men and women who challenge themselves to succeed. This is a beautifully written story about a man who dares set out to change his life, packing along with his humor and all the bunions of foot and soul. It was a very good book. I mean, sometimes, I don't know if it's just me, I get a little bit bored in the middle, and I feel like the author is just filling in because his um, because they wanted him to have a longer book or whatever. So some of it kind of drags on in the middle. But then it gets really interesting again, so I think it's well worth the read. Well, <clears throat> oh my goodness, I have a frog in my throat. Sorry about that, and sorry about the, my eyes going all over the place. I keep forgetting where I'm supposed to look at the camera. But anyway, um, that's a wrap, and I hope everybody enjoys their evening, or their day, or their week, or their year. <laughs> and I will be getting back with you. Remember to like, and share, and comment. Um, the comments down below really help me figure out more of what I should be filming. 
and the <coughs> YouTube also, you know, keeps track of all that, and so it gives credit to my channel. So it would really help me if you be sure to like, and if you liked it well enough to share it, and then you can subscribe. So everybody have a great day. I love you.